Foundation. We're talking about Adopt a Child with Disability. It's an organization where today we're talking with the director, Juan Pablo Collado, about what the organization is about. There's equine therapy, so we're going to be talking about the benefits of that, which is pretty innovative in Belize. So let me leave it there. Juan Pablo, let's have a quick check-in. How are you feeling this morning? Good morning. Uh, I'm feeling great. Thank you. Yeah, you Thank you for right? having me in the show today. I feel very privileged that I get to, to get to your viewers and explain more or less what we're, we're doing and what are the plans. Yeah. Well, initially, yeah. Adopt a Child with Disability is a, a, an NGO that we have been operating for the past six years where we have been attending to children with physical disabilities to provide them with physical therapy on a regular basis. On average, they would come like once a, once a week or twice a month, depending on their physical disabilities. Uh, but uh, since COVID, well, we were not able to provide the children with therapies indoors like we used to right. do. So it came to me as an idea what other alternative we can use and what better to do something outdoors and with horses. And uh, because uh, with equine, that's what equine therapy is. Equine is actually therapy with horses. And right. this is being done uh, around the world in uh, developed countries. So I said, why not start... Uh, a center here in Belize and uh, start uh, because we have uh, what over 50 children that we have been providing constant physical therapy until COVID came and changed the whole. Everything went on a little pause. Yes, yeah. yes. So I had to suspend the program because most of our kids they suffer from uh, respiratory issues. Uh, a simple cold can last them for a longer time. So we had to suspend the program. Our therapists that were helping us uh, went had to go back to their countries. So now we're trying to go back. We, uh, we have applied for a grant to Switzerland and okay. they have approved a small grant where we have started building the center. As you may see, Beautiful. we have some oh, pictures wow. where we, we're building where the horses are gonna be. We have the corral in front where we're gonna be doing the therapies. And I am very happy to know that now uh, the government of Belize is also going to be involved. So we have the Human Development Department, mm -hmm. the Ministry of the Human Development. Uh, I want to give special thanks to the CEO and to the ministers, uh, the minister. Um, and also, I just got to know yesterday that also the Ministry of Health is going to be on board. And you said a special envoy for And her. a special envoy, of course, with uh, Ms. Rosanna Briseño. I want to give her also special thanks because she's always very proactive in, yes. in helping children and families that are in need. And this is a, the perfect, the perfect uh, uh, timing for, to do this project. Yeah, it's, 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 so thank you, thank you for sharing normalcy. that good news. Yes. Indeed, you know, like people are supporting this. And that's what I like. So it's, it's beautiful. I, I want to ask, because whenever we introduce Adopt a Child with Disability, a lot of people thought that I am going to be like a foster parent and inviting me to the, their house. So what is the concept of adopting a child with disability? Well, uh, initially when I started this, uh, there was a patient of mine that uh, they had a little program where they were, they had, they had it named Adopt a, a Grandparent, where you, the, the old folks home used to have grandparents and you could adopt a grandparent so you can go visit him in the weekends and bring some food and share with him. So I said, okay, we can adopt a child with disability, but it was not actually to have the child on adoption, right. but it's, it's, it's rather to adopt the child's disability and in a certain point to support or to sponsor its disability so that we may be able to provide the specific medical needs that the child needs. So um, in regards to the whole concept of the, of the NGO, we try to provide the children with dental care, with medical care whenever necessary. Sometimes we have teams from abroad coming to, to provide with speech therapy as well. So in, we're trying to have an englobe and have a Taoistic approach to, to what the people, the children with disabilities need in Belize. And there's not much, and there's hundreds of children out there that we still need to do a lot of education to the parents to bring them out so that they can be, they, we can include them in society, they can rehabilitate and they can eventually be productive citizens in the country, you know? So I'm thinking now about how young people will be able to make their way to this new center. So is it going to be something where some parents can get that transportation or they're going to be, how is that going to be working? Because maybe for somebody that has a child wearing PG or in Corozal, yes. where the center exactly is going to be located in which yes. district? And this is going to be in the Cayo district. We're building it in, in Benque Viejo. Mm -hmm. um, initially, the program started in San Ignacio, then it expanded to Belmopan. 
and hopefully we can continue expanding. And just recently I hear uh, there was a donation of a bus for, children, for special yes. kids with wheelchairs to uh -huh. the, and it would be available to, to people working with children with disabilities. So I hope um, maybe we can arrange something so that we can probably bring groups. And, and not only we're limiting ourselves to, to children with disabilities, but like before, we used to only see phys physical disabilities, but now with uh, equine therapy, this is very helpful for children with uh, autism, with uh, deficit uh, of attention. It helps with uh, behavioral issues. There's many benef benefits towards to the therapies with horses. Yeah. For example, horses may help with the corporal heat, the, t the contact with the horse, also the three-dimensional rhythmic uh, march of the horse will also stimulate the rhythmic patterns of our our own way of walking. So children that perhaps don't have the capacity to walk may be able to eventually have that stimulus and correct posture. It will help strengthen uh, their bodies. It will help uh, with the range of motion. It will help in in a very broad, broad uh, way in many yeah. aspects of it, you know? All right. Yeah, you, you read my mind when, when you started talking about the, the benefits of equine therapy because it's pretty new. We, I've seen it happening in other countries, as, as you rightly said. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's now happening here. And you mentioned something that I want to tap into, like uh, how, how does a therapy work? You mentioned something about corporal, was it heat? Corporal oh, yeah, the, the, the corporal heat of the horse. Horses actually have like 1.5 degrees higher than our normal temperature so by when the horse starts uh, doing some workout the heat he starts sweating he, he starts sweating and then it, that heat transmits to you by conduction and then eventually that creates a, a, an effect of relaxation uh -huh. and many kids we that suffer from spasticity which is like the contraction of the muscles will tend to relax plus the rhythmic uh, march of horses will also uh, stim uh, mimic the normal rhythm of the way we walk. So automatically this will stimulate the core and go up into your spine all the way into your brain to kind of re-educate that normal rhythmic that usually these children have not had that sensation of, you right. know? And, wow. I, and I've seen horses that have, are able to, to be empathetic with, with their clients as well. Like I've seen like this woman on, on, on social media, she was crying and then the horse yeah. came and started like, petting her and that kind of stuff. And it's oh, just, believe me, yeah, horses can amazing. feel you. And uh, when you look at the horse, you can, you can sense that the horse is feeling you. You can actually feel that the horse can feel if you're depressed, if you're happy. They, they have that extra sensorial uh, yeah. sensitivity, I would say, to be, <laughs> sorry, to be that, redundant. That but true. like dolphins, dogs, horses have that capacity to connect with human beings in, a, in, a do in another level that sometimes we may not comprehend yeah. completely. Because when, Sorry, Ren, go ahead. No, I was going to ask about the next aspect because there's some people that are afraid of horses because, you know, they've yes. seen, you know, the horse kick and all those stuff. And so <laughs> could you talk a little bit about, you know, for parents that are hearing about this, they, their child might have a disability and they're like, I really want to make my child do this, but I'm afraid my child's going to be afraid. Yes. I'm afraid about the risk factors that, you know, how if my child gets kicked by this horse because he or she, no, it's yeah, honest it's truth, you know, like yeah. how if um, they're, they're, they're like, they're getting so scared or something yes. or they, you know, push yes. the horse because you know sometimes kids they don't know of how course. to play or interact so could you talk about well, that? well uh, what we're trying to do is we're going to get horses that are really really tamed uh, first of all they will be castrated they are they're horses that you can walk under their feet you can slap them in in the back and tap them and they will not kick and Plus, they will have a, they will have a custom uh, to riding with people, interacting with people and children. And of course, we have to create the environment as well. Of course, there's always a risk, but we're, we're going to make sure there's always a guide yes. uh, with the horse and always a therapist along with the, with the child because whenever the child is sitting on the horse, we will always be doing some specific exercises, stretching on the horses. And this is going to be progressive. First, the child has to get to see the horse, he will touch the horse and eventually get to the point where we will build a ramp where he will put the saddle on and he will progressively, we will progressively... Build uh, a relationship with the yes, horse. Yes, build kinda. a relationship until he's ready to, to ride the horse and first he will just lay down, we will not walk, he will do some stretchings, he will play on top of the horse and when he feels comfortable enough then we might start with it. So everything is very progressive and palliatively we get the child and the horse comfortable to, yeah. to, to start like with this is beautiful the fact that um, we're, we're 
exploring new approaches into how can we interact and, and improve the quality of life with persons with disabilities, yes. one, but also like building that connection with human and the environment and nature is, you know, if you, if you want to garner that stewardship and, and, and just changing the world, like this is, this is where we, we got to go. So Juan Pablo, people have, for the viewers that have been here in this conversation and they want to be a godparent to a child, uh, with disabilities, because it's adopt yes, a, pers yes. a person with disabilities. How can they <clears throat> participate in this program? How can they support a child? Okay. Registration, financial support, how, do, how does that go about? Well, um, uh, whosoever may be interested or have a child, it would be nice if they can visit our Facebook page. It's Adopt a Child with Disability. They can contact us uh, uh, through social media or perhaps uh, the Contact may be here present in, uh, in the television. Showing your flyer on, on the flyer is there, yeah. and perhaps the phone number could be put later. Or, uh -huh. uh, and also, people that might want to support the program, they're always welcome, and we need all the help we can get because there is we can only go s for so long with this. And but we would like to make it a sustainable program, and that's what we're looking for for a sustainable income that will maintain the program, make sure the horses are fed, make sure they get their health care, try, uh, try to assist the parents that are of very low resources so that we can provide perhaps transportation to the center and back home. And I hope the community, just like the government is getting involved and some ministries, we welcome uh, the other ministries to get yeah. involved. We private would sector, like businesses. the private sector. I know businesses. to provide transportation on these different things, like I feel like this yes. is where we kind of like budding, because I know I have a viewer here saying like, um, is the organization going to be able to assist when it comes to transportation? They're talking about, you know, they struggle sometimes to have transportation from yes. their own school to their house yes, and yes. so forth. So well, that's an issue we've had previous with many of our of our uh, children that are uh, very low income families. So sometimes we will get a taxi guy is volunteering. I will go and pick her up and bring her and pick her and take her back home. So we get a lot of uh, individuals that always uh, volunteer to do this. Um, not, this is not always the case, but hopefully in the future we may have a vehicle that can tr transport uh, maybe groups and have uh, uh, a whole situation. We have not focused in the transportation yet as we are still in the building process. Yes, uh, I'm still in the selection process of the horses. And along the way, I hope we can... Uh, uh, overcome every milestone and eventually have the best services for, for our go. children with disabilities. Yeah. And, 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 I love, and I love in the future, picture. in the future, I would like to probably have centers in different districts so that everybody has the access towards it because they all have, they all have the right to access to health and to, and to a better quality of life. Right. You know? So for anybody that's yeah. interested in supporting a child uh, in, in whichever form, they can contact the Facebook page. I'm also thinking for people that want to volunteer at the center as well, because oh. stables will need to get maintained, horses yes. will need to get uh, taken care of and yes. that kind of thing. There's people that can volunteer as well. Of I, course, I'm assuming, of course. Right? That would be lovely yeah. if we can have that connection. people and uh, hopefully when the program is running, you guys can come and... Definitely, uh, I we, love horses. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I, I do, I love, <laughs> no serious, I love horseback riding. I did that, I think, a couple, a couple weeks, weeks again. Ago, uh -huh. And it was just amazing. I think people don't understand. I think, again, we have that fear of the mm -hmm. horse of seeing stuff where horse kick here and so. Yes. But again, you have to just be able to calm yourself down. Your horse can sometimes calm you down and you can just like enjoy yes. that ride. So I'm just thinking how beautiful this program is going to be for our young people that get yes. that opportunity. Well, the thing is, I think you're going to be very comfortable because they will be very thin team, horses. Yeah. And not only we're focusing on, on disabled children, but we're trying to have also kids uh, normal with n normal kids that would like to interact with the horses as well that they can come for lessons and perhaps there might be a small fee towards towards and this that can to help learn the so center. that that will help the center to sustain itself so that we may be able to provide this service for the children with disability free of cost all right no, i like no, that idea i think yeah. that's a really good vision yes. because there's a lot of people that want to take their children horseback riding and so yeah. forth and with that, yeah. you can just generate the funds right there. So yeah. for people that are asking and thinking, we haven't gotten into that stage right now. Like um, as Juan Pablo said, he, he's at the stage of picking the horses I would like and the building facility. Find horses. So if anybody out there has very nice horses, tame horses that we can evaluate and assess the way they walk, and uh, th that would be very helpful. We're there looking to start with uh, three horses 
and from there we will move on as the demand uh, asks for it. So, yes. do you do you have like a like a set date by when do you plan to inaugurate? Oh, I the think we might be inaugurating the place end of May, and I think by that's pretty soon. Yes, I want to start before wow. the rain starts because that's our true. our coral doesn't have a shed yet. Okay. So hopefully in the future we can uh, raise some funds to have it on uh, on a shed, and so that we can have therapies in the summer and during the rainy season as well. Very cool. And the good thing about horses is that you can get a mount right now and they populate. <laughs> they reproduce. Yes. They're, they're castrated. No, well... Yeah, sometimes they oh, have to be castrated, be castrated because huh? uh, so that you, you don't want them to be Aggressive. getting wild. Yeah. And... Oh, that is true. Because I remember, when again, when I went horseback riding, the, um, the horse trainer said, it's okay because they, re they populate and like we don't have to worry about buy a horse every single minute because yeah. of that exact reason. So we might have to look at that, you know. Well, so. uh, there's a lot of horseback uh, riding tour companies that may have a little old horse that don't want to take a 200 pound person and he's already very tame used to that so uh, it would be nice if they can approach us and I don't know how many but that, that would be fantastic so that I can come along and evaluate the horse and see if it's opt to be part of the of the center yeah. I love that back. so this is we for the business the sector out there for people that know of tame horses this is the time to reach out you can be a part of something so great, so beautiful. And so it's now your time to speak out to forward contacts in, again, um, the Facebook page is... Adopt a Child with Disability. Adopt a Child with Disability. So go on the Facebook page. You can be able to email in, forward those contacts, make the connections. And this is how we make Belize a better place. It's just little steps, little hints and forwards phone here. Number. Yeah, we have a phone number also. Uh, it's 620-5230. You can always uh, call that contact if you uh, if you are if you would like to assist or in any way volunteer assist any contribution in any way would be greatly appreciated. So there the you go. invitation is extended, guys. As you've heard, all the great effects and contributions these horses are going to make for these children. You can be a part of it. Send your assistance, whether it be financially, whether it be by just providing time, forwards, connections. That is how we make this thing happen. And yes. so thank you so much. Thank you, Juan Pablo. Oh, you're welcome. This, thank this you for having is. me We here. truly appreciate this conversation. And then you made us learn. I didn't know all the stuff that comes with horseback riding, and just basically interacting with horses. Like, I think a lot of people probably just, yeah, like, I mean, learn when, stuff. When you get on the horse, the first thing they tell you is, like, um, you need to, like, kind of, like, adjust yourself because the horse can feel yes. Yes. your emotions, right? So... Just like yeah. by simply sitting there, you're able to calm yourself, you're yeah. able to connect with the horse and, you know, empathize and, all and build a relationship. Yes. I think yes. I love Beautiful. the fact that it's going to be a transitioning yeah. process. You start off with yes. a relationship and horses are so sweet. So I'm just loving this in every kind of, yeah. I can't wait till we decide to take our trip yeah. down. We're, we're going to go, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, you have to yeah. come <laughs> Your down, face yeah. is like, I yeah. don't know you have about to come <laughs> west and see, see all what we're going to be doing soon. Uh, horses hopefully will start helping children physically, mentally, emotionally, emotionally and yeah. perhaps even spiritually. Because if all these other elements are yeah. sync and they're well, then spiritually I think we're all definitely I going love to grow. that. The connection is going to be happening. I see it yes. unfolding. And again, for people, this is the time. Make the contacts, make the links. It's collaboration. We need you to extend those links and forwards. So... With that, we thank you again for this initiative oh. and thank you for the great work. Six years, I can see many more years to come. Thank again, you. Thank, thank you, you for putting much. the effort in. Oh, so, thank you very much for having that, me here. No problem. Okay. With that, Bye. we go to our next commercial break. One more time.